An architect's design process always starts on site. The first thing we always do is go on site, explore the site, and understand all the parameters that are going on around us. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today we're talking about the architect's design process from start to finish. We're going to be looking at everything that goes through my mind as I'm designing and as I'm putting together a package for a client. So like I mentioned, the design process always starts on site. We go out on site, we understand what the client is talking about and we get a brief put together. By stepping foot physically on the site, you can understand the lay of the land. You can understand how the winds and the cross breezes actually work on that site and how the surrounds affect it. So for example, if there is a house next door, it might be blocking those severe southwesterly winds that could be coming through. On another hand, there might be this perfect little pocket of a corridor that lets that breeze cut through that entire site. Without stepping on the site, you actually have no idea. Google Maps is phenomenal, but it just doesn't give you enough critical information. Obviously, you document and take as many photos and videos as possible of the site at the very start to make sure you can refer back and refresh your memory as you're designing and as the process continues along. Something I find very important, very critical is to try find key elements of that site. So finding unique characteristics either from the landscaping, the environment, the views or potentially the surrounding neighborhood. Taking a look at the characteristics of the street and understanding if the design would actually suit that environment or if it would just be a monolithic design that doesn't work at all. So everything from day one starts on the site and is one of the most critical times of the design throughout the entire process. Once the site visit has been completed, then it's time to actually start documenting, designing, and thinking this process through. For me personally, every design starts with a hand sketch. Now, like you all know, I can't draw to save my life, but it does help me get my thoughts out from my brain and onto paper. Most of the time, I'll use Morfolio Trace, get out a blank piece of paper, sketch out what the actual site looks like, massing out shapes and areas. It's basically blocking and stacking in a floor plan point of view to understand how that site plan would work. So if it's an apartment building, if it's a house, it's very important that we think about the movement, the traffic, and the flow of people throughout that environment before we even start thinking about the design itself. We wanna make sure that that site is optimized, working properly, and then we can further break down the design. So once I have a good understanding of how that site is actually gonna work, where things sit, where the best optimized areas are for each individual item, then it's time to actually break down very, very quickly all the planning regulations around that site. Because every single site here in Australia is different, has a different planning policy, different regulation, different zoning. This process has to be done for every single property. Now, again, it is one of the most critical elements because if you miss something, like the council mandates two fully grown trees in the front verge, that might completely derail your entire design and force you to go back and redesign as much as possible. At this point in time, it's important that we get the creative mind working rather than the critical analysis mind from that site plan that we did previously. To transition for me personally from a critical to a creative mind, I try to take as much inspiration as I can from different mediums. So we start looking at inspirational architects from around the world. We start looking at different design mediums, different design textures. We start breaking down material and color palettes that work together in that environment. So from that site visit, we might be able to comprehend that the best medium for this site is a combination of earthy tones. We might be using a bit of rammed earth, a bit of fiber cement cladding. We might be using some metal cladding. I don't really know what is happening in this design just yet, but I know that these textures, these materials are gonna work with what's on site and what the context and the surrounds actually mean. So by putting together these materials and these color palettes, understanding some key precedents and being inspired by some of the architectural greats, then we can actually start putting together a design. Typically for me, this means all of the massing has been completed in Morfolio Trace. I understand the general layout of how the start of the house is gonna work and how the site is gonna work. I then transition into Archicad and I'll start massing out full shapes and sizes. So I'll take the brief from the client if they want four bedrooms, five bedrooms, whatever it is, start massing and placing that out to work for that site as best as possible. Personally, I'll always be designing in both 2D and 3D. I'm never gonna be designing just in a floor plan, just in section, or just in elevation. The fact that architecture has progressed so far from just a 2D manual paper and pen drawing, and now that we have a full 3D model at our disposal at all times as we continuously draw, 
allows us basically to rapidly adjust that design to suit every single design decision that we make along the way. So let's say all of a sudden we've had to protrude one section of that house out and normally you just think, okay, on 2D plan, that doesn't have too much of an impact. But as soon as we look at that in a 3D elevation point of view, we might understand there are so many more flaws with that option that we've just decided to make than we could see just on a floor plan. So for me, form will always follow function, but the form is just as important sometimes as the actual function. So by designing in these 3D elements, we're able to basically create a beautiful 3D architectural model from the outside and a fully functional interior as well. Once this 3D model is completed, then it's more so about documenting this journey and this experience with the client. The 3D model means absolutely nothing until you can map and model everything that needs to be communicated as best as possible. The storytelling is just as important as the actual design. That's why I will go ahead and document a lot of this project as well as produce some 3D renders so this story can be told. We want people to be excited about something that hasn't been built yet. We want them to be part of this journey as much as possible. So we start breaking down these key elements that we've been able to pull out from the site. We talk about the narrative as you approach, we talk about the materials and the textures, and we tell that entire story through 3D images before we talk about 2D plans. And overall, that is basically my creative journey from start to finish to get a sketch design out for a client from absolutely nothing. It is all about understanding the site, understanding the context, then understanding your fundamental principles, your values and your precedents, and then moving on to a design and working in both 2D and 3D simultaneously to produce the best form follow functions architecture possible. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me for more great architectural content. If you love the video, make sure you smack that subscribe button down below. But like always, I'll see you next Monday.